Hello, I'm Daniel Bösch from the DJSA and I'm going to show you the palpation of the radial nerve. This nerve is quite well palpable and allows you, as an example, to feel the density of neural tissues. I've noticed on our courses that most of the therapists have good knowledge in muscle palpation, but generally much less in nerve palpation. Before palpation, we have to have a close look at the anatomy. The radial nerve arises from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus and passes posteriorly to the pectoralis minor muscle into the armpit. It reaches the posterior part of the upper arm laterally on the long head of the triceps brachii muscle. Up to here, the nerve is too deep to be palpated. The nerve lies within the radial sulcus, also known as the radial groove, which runs in a spiral course from proximal medial to distal lateral around the humerus. The sulcus separates the origins of the lateral and the medial head of the triceps brachii muscle. The radial nerve crosses the lateral into muscle septum just distally of the middle of the humerus to pass to the anterior side of the upper arm. It remains posterior to the brachialis muscle, but anterior to the humerus. It divides at the level of the elbow into two branches, the sensory or superficial branch and the motor or deep branch. The sensory branch passes between the brachioradialis and the extensor carpioradialis longus muscle and travels straight down, covered by the brachioradialis muscle, towards the back of the hand, where it innervates the dorsal aspect of the thumb, the index and middle finger. The motor or deep branch crosses the supinator muscle, where it innervates all the extensors of the forearm. So, a lot of things to know. Now let me show you the course of the radial nerve on our model. The brachial plexus arises from C4-5 to T1, passes in between the anterior and the medial scalene muscles and then posterior to the pectoralis minor muscle. The radial nerve comes from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. We know that the radial nerve is deep on the posterior side of the upper arm, just laterally to the tendon of the long head of the triceps brachii muscle. Up to here, the nerve is too deep to be palpated. The nerve runs then distally in the radial sulcus, which it is in between the lateral and the medial head of the triceps. Here you can quite easily palpate the radial nerve with a pointy and snapping palpation. To locate the radial sulcus, you have to identify the distal border of the lateral head of the triceps brachii muscle. By contracting the triceps in extension against resistance, you will see this depression, which marks the distal border or the end of the muscle belly of the lateral head. If your patient has not so much muscle mass, we will find the radial nerve exactly in this depression. If the patient has a lot of muscle mass, you will find the nerve slightly proximal, parallel to this depression, because the muscle belly overlaps the radial groove. Now you can follow the nerve using a pointy palpation. But you will lose the nerve when it passes to the anterior side of the upper arm, where it is posterior to the brachialis muscle, but anterior to the humerus. At the level of the elbow, the radial nerve divides into two branches, the sensory or superficial branch and the motor or deep branch. Here you can't palpate the nerve anymore. The sensory branch passes between the brachioradialis and the extensor carpioradialis longus muscle towards the back of the hand. The motor or deep branch crosses the supinator muscle where it innervates all the extensors of the forearm. So that's it. Nerve localization and palpation is not so easy and requires a lot of topographical and anatomical knowledge. I'm sure that you agree that it's nice to be precise. We have to practice it to improve our skills. 
This is important to avoid compression of nerves from manual trigger point therapy and injuries from dry needling. In this context, note the general rule that if you would needle any motor nerve branch, the patient will feel a local sharp or burning pain and no radiation to the sensory area. The radiation could happen if you needle into a sensory or mixed nerve. I hope this video is going to help you in your daily work as a therapist.